this journey is really, it's not for the faint heart and it's not easy and it's not luck. And when people say, oh, your boys are so lucky, it's, it, okay, they're fortunate. Yeah, it's really fortunate position, but that's come, that, that's come from hard work and sacrifice. There's a lot of sacrifice. Welcome to Behind the Boots, where we have a really unique opportunity to explore youth football from a parent's perspective. Today, we have the pleasure to introduce Emma and Brad. Emma and Brad are parents to four boys, all of whom play football, right? We do. And, and two of which are in an academy. So welcome. We're so thrilled. And we want to really just take it right back to the beginning. Your older son is 14. Yes. So how did football start for you? How did you get into football? How did that journey begin? I, I think it started from Brad, really. Didn't it? I think the boys always kept, went to watch you, didn't you, when you you were playing? Mm. And I think you, your dad is your, you know, when you're a when you're a boy and you you look up to your dad, he's your hero, right? So um, yeah, I think that's where it all started. That's where the love. It was always match of the day. It was always on the television. Um, they they'd grown up with it, right? You know, right from the beginning. Yeah, I mean. I'd train on a Tuesday night or a, th and a Thursday night, so they'd always come to training and be kicking a football around. And then on the Saturday, they would come and watch. So, yeah, they'd just been surrounded. Harrison was always surrounded by it as a young boy, and then it's just spread through everyone else, basically. <laughs> like, wow, it's like, wow. yeah, catching. <laughs> but was it a difficult decision to, to join an academy? Your kids, I guess, have all started off in grassroots, like like you know most kids do how was the decision to go from one to the other um i don't know i suppose it was just a natural progression really um, i think harrison he's the oldest and uh i think with him it's the first time you're going through anything he was really fortunate to have a fantastic grassroots coach and um, really fortunate wasn't he yeah um and I think he sort of set, he set the standard, set the levels um, and all of the boys within that grassroots sort of, they, they went on to play good levels. Um, but I think we sort of, we entered into that, that academy system sort of, we didn't really know too much about it, Debris. I mean, you, did you know, did you know? Well, I only when growing up and playing with other players, yeah. it looked different when I was younger, but. I mean, the guy that was coaching Harrison had been around, a lot of people he's been around with have been around the academy system and the way he, he trained all the boys from like five or six years old was very similar to what they would be getting in an academy. Mm -hmm. And then from that, the team was successful. And then they got invited in for a trial game at Southampton. And yeah, Harrison got picked up from one of the scouts from the trial game. Um, he would have been about seven probably. And they'd already been going about... At, about a year, I think, before he came in. So he started off a little bit later than a lot of the other boys. And um, so that's, yeah, that's basically how it all started. And was, and was that a, a local development? Was that the what, what how it started? He got invited. Yeah, and so, yeah, so it was, no, it was, yeah. So the, from the trial game, he then went to a DC centre. And that was at Southampton as well. So it was a little bit of travelling. But that was the only DC centre around at that time locally. Now they've expanded out to to a lot of other um, cities around the area, but it was just at Southampton. So he went in there and then he started at the small, like the bottom group, and then after four weeks he moved up to the next group, and then he was training with the older boys, and then from that he then went into the pre academy. So it's just yeah, you had to work through three sort of groups to then get a trial in the pre academy, and then he was in there. And I remember turning up and the first game he played, I thought, oh, my God, he is absolutely nowhere near the level compared to these boys. And, yeah, they uh, quite, they quite stuck away. Yeah, it was an eye-opener. Quite, quite an eye-opener. Yeah, so I, I think that it's sort of been quite a, a natural progression, hasn't it, for him, sort of, you know, starting and, and playing football sort of competitively from the age of sort of six, seven, and then... You know, he, he joined he joined the academy, you know, from the pre academy stage, didn't he? And he's sort of he's he's made his way through from there. Um 
with Aussie, it's a, it was a similar, it was similar, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a, it was a, yeah, not sort of similar. He was, it was almost like Aussie was already known by quite a lot of people already because of Harrison. Yeah, I suppose. About so, it. like, we'd be in, like, we'd be in, like, at six of sides and, ah, uh, who's that? Because he had jet blonde hair. It's like, oh, who's that <laughs> blonde boy with you, Harrison? Ah, oh, that's my brother. Yeah. And and his, he was already, not, and then they would watch him, like, kicking a ball around, like, four or five years old. And then, yeah, they already sort of knew him. And then when they watched him play, mm. um, he was picked up by Brighton, Southampton, Fulham. He had to sort of went into all them clubs at some stage. Mm. And, um, yeah. I'm interested to know. So the 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 switch between grassroots and academy did did you know what that was going to entail from a from a, a support perspective? Do you do you know what was ahead of you? As yeah, you did, would that have changed the? Do you know? Do you know what? We still, we still don't know what's ahead of us now, and okay. we've, we've been in the system for uh, Harris has been in the system seven years now. They, we still we still don't know what's coming. You, mm. it, there's not enough support, in my opinion, from other parents. Um, mm. It's always comes from the club's perspective. Mm. You di- I think there's a lack of education from other parents of what that looks like. Um, what do you mean from other parents? So other parents that are being true to sister. Oh right, be like as a like people to speak to, I suppose. Yeah, I think I think there's I think they should bring parents that have been through the system into clubs. Mm. And like advise them and tell them what's coming. Yeah, but that's why these sort of podcasts are just so fantastic. But I really do think that I think if we had had access to something like that at the beginning, it would have been. I mean, okay, yes, it's you know you're talking to us. It's our personal opinion, yeah. and everybody's journey is so very different. We're really fortunate to have had a relatively positive one so far. But I think just even being able to listen to other people's experiences like you can either relate or it might just trigger something to go well, actually i remember when that person said x y and z so it might have affected maybe certain things that we would have done yeah i think from our point of view as well I, we know what's coming for aussie so we can prepare mm-hmm. because we've been through it with harrison we can almost prepare him for what's coming mm-hmm. and we can grip little things into his little mind and say oh this this is going to happen next year or you know and he and he's already well He's well learned about what's coming, which is, you know, it's gold dust. He is, but we never. One thing I would say in terms of like looking at from the academy side of it is we've always thought of and spoken to the boys about the academy as a training facility. So for them, it's they're really it's somewhere they go to to train with other players and. What they do away from the club is so very important. In fact, it's crucial for their development. So they go away to practice, whether it's with like another coach or with Brad, and then they go and they train at the academy. Because one thing that's really important, I think, for for me as a mother is is like I don't I don't want to set. Of course, we need failures. We need failures in in order to grow as human beings. But I don't want to necessarily set my boys up for failure i don't want to i don't want them to go on this academy journey thinking that they're going to be 100 percent next year they're going to be there and then the year after that and make it all the way through the first team okay that's what they're aspiring to do that's what the that's what they go there they train and that of course is in the back of their head but i'm not we we don't position the academy like that you know if you get released at the end of this next year okay fine then you find somewhere else and you're going to go and train at that facility. It's a journey. It's a hundred percent a journey and nothing is a given ever. Um, that's one thing that's really important to us. Don't you feel that? Yeah, definitely. You know, of course you want to take pride in the academy that you're playing for, whether it's like, you know, whether it's Chelsea, Man United, you know, whatever club it might be, you take pride and you wear that badge with pride, but you know that you're in the academy. You're not playing for the first team. Does that make sense? Um, sorry, I went off. Wouldn't we sort of went back. Off. We no. sort of got launched away from we, we're talking about to start with. Bring it back down. <laughs> who, who cares? We love it. I mean, I thought what what I absolutely loved about that, you know, is is your your just making it part of a bigger picture for them. Mm. It's like this is where you train, and you also do this, and you do this. Is that is that have I got that right? Is that what you're kind of it's like, what do you do with them? Yeah. 
What's that? Yeah, so I, I mean, I train. I've been to other coaches over the years, but I train them predominantly. Don't predominantly you? now, um, because I know what they need. I know what's going on in the background with the academy. I know what the academy is trying to get out of the boys, so I can go away and work on the things that they that they really need. Whereas if you take them to somebody else, they generally set up a session for ten kids, um, do the same things. And they don't, and the boys don't get, they don't maximise the not, potential out of that session. Um, it's not necessarily for that individual. I mean, there are some fantastic individual coaches out there. Like, don't get me wrong, they really, really are. Um, I just, I think for us, it's been for us the individual coach like comes in and might work with them for a period of time on on something specific but yeah you've always pretty well so for, for me it's just having a different voice now and again if yeah, i'm working with someone else mm. rather than just listening to me mm. it sure, I'm, yeah. I, i'm interested in, in in that brad about your relationship with with the boys and in, in yeah training. how how does that how does that work how do they respond to dad <laughs> being coach um, how do you respond on, to them, honestly to dad? unbelievable I've got such an amazing relationship with the boys because, I mean, I don't always take them. Emma does that. We probably do 50% each. Mm -hmm. But wow. like, even in the car, like, there's a lot, a lot of the ex-pros always say, oh, parents are driving their kids here, there and everywhere. But that time we sit in the car, we're singing, rapping, talking about... <laughs> Well, I try, I try, I try, I try No, but, they want recordings uh, now, Brad. <laughs> we talk about schoolwork. We talk about football. We talk about everything. That's that specific time in the car that I just have with me and them is priceless. Whereas I think a lot of other parents, um, they probably come home from school. They sit in their rooms on their Xboxes, or it's just that time is priceless. And our relationship in that car is. It just makes it really tight. So when I do take him out training, I think there's a level of respect between us. Um, Harrison's always been amazing. Even like sometimes now he will have a little bite back, and sometimes I can see. Yeah, it's... but that's his age. Yeah, what I, I can see his. No, but I can see. So I can see he's always got a point of view, and so, and a lot of the time it is. It, well, sometimes it's valid, <laughs> but it's not so important for them. I think to to feel like they're heard. So even if you're talking about um, Casper, our youngest, he's eight, and also bringing Zach into it, who's just started playing grassroots football at the age of 12. Um, it's it's when you're saying to them, okay, you need to work on X, Y, and Z or whatever, or when you're having that those chats, it's if they, if they like say, well, actually, how about this? Then it's making sure that they feel heard and they're also respected. It's, it's, it's a mutual thing. Yeah, well, the, the other thing that I always did from early was always video everything. Mm -hmm. So, like, I would be there videoing what the, whatever action they're doing. So, I might be receiving to play forward or whatever it is. And then I say, you're taking too many touches. And then Harrison would go, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. Okay, come here, have a look at the video. What do you think of this? So, that stopped a lot of arguments. <laughs> evidence. Yeah, there was evidence there. And then, but then he'd say, oh, yeah, but... Then he'll have a point of view, yeah, but I'm taking that touch. So if somebody comes towards me, then I'm slowing them down to speed up past them. So there's always like a there's always a discussion around everything we do. So I think for their learning, that's really important because they're actually thinking how that looks like in a game. Whereas when you take them to other coaches, they don't have that. They don't get into any context or they don't really get into the detail of why they're doing it. They're just setting it up to do it. Um, so, yeah, and I think for that, over the years, that's really helped them develop. To go into the original um, question, mostly about like you know what it looks like to us, like all the other little bits and pieces. It's it's everything. Like we try to we try to we I don't know we we are quite embedded into like the football way of life. So we try to make it quite holistic. So we so Brad does a lot of the the sort of the practice away from from the academy mm -hmm. and I do a lot of like things like I'll do yoga sessions with them or talk to them about stretching um it's like even the conversations that we have and uh, in the kitchen like about what we're eating like why are we eating it it's just always trying to drip feed little nuggets of like like uh, 
Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're just help. trying to educate. Yeah, and oh, so yeah. Like, yeah. just trying to make it like, okay, even like bedtime, okay, they kiss. They don't want to go to bed at a reasonable hour, but it's like, okay, but it, it's always about explaining the reasons why. So, like, Brad will be like, yeah, but you need to go to bed now because the thing is, if you don't go to bed at a good time tonight, it knocks on to tomorrow and then it might knock on to your game. And it's all about, it's trying to keep a consistency. And I just think that now, that it's really evident that when the kids question or they have a problem with something, it's because it hasn't been explained to them properly. Because yeah. we always try to communicate and explain things. That makes sense. Yeah. And how, so how do they respond to that sort of learning? It's up and down. They're normal people. They're, you know, they're kids. They're, they want to rebel. They think they know best at times. I mean, generally, they're pretty good. I would say. Wouldn't you? I think I think we're lucky because Harrison is. He's step. He's, he's set, soft, uh, step standard yeah, he's for the animal. Yeah. yeah. And he's very good. He's very good at all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say so. I I love the point that you made about the the car journey and spending time. Because mm-hmm. that's often a it's often a, a response that you get from other parents who are questioning you or inquisitive about the journey. It's like you know that's a big commitment, and it is. You know we are committing to supporting our kids, but it's um. It can often be seen as a negative thing. And I totally agree with you. That car journey, that spending time, having a chat about, you know, other stuff, school, they're in the car, they can't escape. Um, but it's, yeah, it gives you that that quality time. That's certainly one of those, you know, I think rewarding things about about this journey, actually. It yeah. is, but it's finding, it is finding balance though, because sometimes, and, and reading the and reading the situation right. sometimes they just want to put their beats on or their airpods or whatever it is and and not talk mm-hmm. and that's absolutely mm-hmm. fine because we all need escapism we all need time just to just to process our own thoughts whether that's with music or whatever mm-hmm. um but i mean one of the things that you, you came back it was only yesterday and you said oh i took harrison up to the academy it was yesterday morning he was there because he's there um two full days at the moment tuesday and a wednesday and you said, oh, we, I, I stuck Jordan Henderson's podcast on um, the High Performance one. And you said how fantastic it was. And I said, oh, was, was he listening to it? Because sometimes he'll just put me, he went, he actually was. He was actually listening. He said, we didn't really talk. He said, but, you know, sometimes just putting something in, it, it, it provokes, like, thought for them. or what. Yeah, I should imagine when he comes, because he's away still at the moment, I should imagine when he comes back tonight, there'll be some sort of conversation about that podcast, like from him. They say, oh, yeah, I didn't realise you did this or, yeah, it's sort of, yeah, you sow the seed, don't you? And then they, they, they could be like a week later and then say something. You're like, oh, yeah. Also, so going it. back to sometimes the negative responses or um, uh, opinions that you get from parents that are outside of the academy system. Um, and in it. And, and and in it, but mainly people that are in it sort of get it from a point of view that they know what it is to commit. They you know. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is like if you're um so some of the boys' friends, parents might say, Oh, I would never do all of that travelling. I would never do this. Oh, you're you're but you know, I remember the comments that you have, you you force your kids to practice, you push them to practice, don't yeah. you? But actually I just think him taking the boys out to practice and it's not just Harrison and Ozzy he will take to practice he takes Casper you even take now Zach's got into football you take him so it doesn't matter what level like we don't invest any less in Zach than what family affair a hundred percent right but it's it's bonding time and I totally get like we live in a really pressured world now and you go to work nine to five and people are just they just get home and they just want to zone out. And sometimes engaging with the kids is, is tough. It's tough, even if you know if you've had a tough day. Sometimes you just want to come home. But it's that we're going out to practice, or I'm driving the boys up to the academy. You know, and that's a 45 minute journey. That forces you to engage a little more. And you know, in- yeah. The the other thing is I was going to touch on the car journey home from training and from games. Because there's there's such a stigma around parents shouting in, in the car on the way home or talking about the game and you should leave the kids to, you know, process. process what they've done. But I actually find the car journey home a chance 
to get again to get them on their own and actually talk about what's happened and to get a reaction because because we live in a world now where the kids don't self reflect mm -hmm. like they always used to yeah, yeah. So, so they're always on their phones like on social mm -hmm. media or they're on their Xboxes or they're watching television that time I think that time on the way back from the game is a perfect time again you've got them and they can't go anywhere just to self reflect on what they thought went well and what didn't mm -hmm. and then you know I might say oh did you that situation happened what did you think of that and it provokes a conversation mm -hmm. and you can self-reflect there and then when it's just happened mm -hmm. rather than as soon as we come home and shut the door i think that should be the end of it mm -hmm. yeah, that, now we're in home now we're at, now we're in family and home time mm -hmm. whereas i think after the game you sat in the car had a chat then you can say what you want to say and then you get home that's it done mm -hmm. you know sunday lunch or whatever that might <laughs> but, be it, but, but like don't get me wrong like every Every car journey isn't wonderful engagement with your children. That's not. I've I've driven to the academy and I've cried the whole way there. Like literally, <laughs> not like I'm. Like, <laughs> you know, but I have you know tears come down because I'm so. It's stressful. It's. I mean, we have got that. We're a family of six. It's quite. It can logistically be a nightmare. There's times where you are like, I can't do this anymore. And then something happens and it's all fine again. But it's riding that roller coaster. It can be tough, can't it? It can be tough because we're pulled from pillar to post. I mean, we're fortunate that, that the two boys are at the same academy. So we've got a good relationship with that academy. They know us really well. And when we've asked for support with anything, we've had it like within reason. You know, they, I, I remember, um, it got to a point where the family who felt incredibly disconnected this was like maybe a couple of years ago and i just said brad we need we need to sort this out because this is it it's too much at the moment called harrison's coach he was actually incredible and just said you know what how i because they know us as a family they know that brad would go and do idp work with h away from the um from the club he was like do you know what just take a few days of training off. Just don't come in. Have a really long weekend. Eat dinner around the table together because that's one thing that we try to do at least once a week. And that's really sad that I'm saying that we try to do it once a week because we're mm -hmm. never together. You know, it was Casper's birthday yesterday, his ninth mm -hmm. birthday. And Harrison rang and he was just like, he could hear all the family here. And he just said, I feel gutted I'm not there. So, so that's, and that's coming for, you know, we are, we even though we're not, even though we're not here all the time together, we are close, aren't we? And I think things like those journeys, you know, the boys, they all come and watch each other. Last Sunday, Hamson was there, you know, at the, at the, watching Aussies game. And that's really important for us to stay as close as we possibly can, even though we're all over the place. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, no, you guys, I'm loving this. We're getting lots of <laughs> So much wisdom here on practical as well, because do your boys, do they train on different days? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that we, literally is doubling up. I mean, we, we, we're, we're there, we're there every single day. Monday to Sunday. Yeah. Mo Monday to Sunday. We're there every single day. So on a Monday night, Ozzy's there. Tuesday morning, Harrison has to be there at half eight. And then he's there all day Tuesday, all day Wednesday. Ozzy has training Wednesday night. Harrison gets picked up. So he's hosted on a Tuesday night with a lovely host family. Mm. Really fortunate to have them actually. And um, then Thursday night, Harrison's in. Friday, Ozzy's in. Saturday, Harrison's game. Sunday, it's Ozzy's game. Wow. So we're there all the time. We're yeah, waving it. Wait a minute. Sorry. And then, oh, and sorry. Then also, and then addition, and then in dish, addition to that, I train Casper's team on a Wednesday. And his his uh, JPL team. I train Casper's team on a Thursday. Casper has a game on a on a Saturday afternoon and a Sunday morning. And then Zach. And then Zach, who's just started playing football, he has a he he trains on a Monday night and has a game on a Sunday. Wow, I feel dizzy. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you see, but just see people with it. with that many kids. That you, when you say it like that, you I bet you just do it. What needs to happen today? And you just work it out because yeah. when you talk about it like that, you're like, I don't know so how we do it. <laughs> so true. Can't plan anything. Yeah, we were talking about that really recently, saying, you know, someone said, "Oh, you must be really organised." And I said, "We're well, really not. We can't live like that. Mm. We can't live with a calendar and know that that because, as you know, Marcia, like, and things change. 
games get cancelled uh they might move to an away fixture we can't we just have to live by the day and each morning we go right where are we going today what are we doing you know being really lucky as well because i work shift work so i'm around like some morning some afternoons um so yeah it's works helps it does help and then and i don't work anymore yeah emma can't work it'd be physically impossible Mm. we wouldn't be able to do it i think i i probably i I could if if I you know if if I needed to I would you know hundred we would fit it in but I think just mentally like, yeah enough space a lot, lot going on. lot going on I mean that's great insight as well for just people even starting this journey just knowing that there's a lot of you know things to move and shift and be open and flexible to you 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 made a a really interesting comment about relationship with the club just tell me a bit more about that because I think. To me, that's a very important aspect of, of a journey. How does that happen? How do you, what's your advice for building a relationship? I think the biggest thing is being open. There's so many, there's so many families that are closed because they think if they're open and they, let the, club, they let the club know everything, then that almost will go against them. Yeah. Whereas I think from our point of view, if Harrison or Ozzy or anyone's not at the club, we just find somewhere else. It doesn't. It doesn't bother me to a certain... It, look, at the end of the day, I want them to progress through that pathway, but if they don't, it doesn't worry me. So we're quite open. So I think once you get that open conversation, I think that's where the magic happens yeah. um, with the kids. And you get, you you know, they're, they're open to helping you, aren't they? Yeah, I think, I think it's difficult in the beginning. I think when you start, it's, oh, my son's been selected for a, you know, signed for, for an academy and there's like a grandeur about it. And that's that can be quite overwhelming exciting all these different feelings and then it's almost like fear a little bit of fear sets in because you know it's only like for a year you're signed for a year so you've got that whole retain and release period all through and that can be quite stressful um and we're really fortunate again because we've already been through that mm-hmm. but to, to this point up to under 15s with harrison um so going through it with aussie has made us probably a little bit more relaxed so we're lucky that we've had We've gone through that with H and the club know us. I think the biggest piece of advice I would give any parent starting out is be honest and be open. Don't be afraid to speak to them. But I think always when you when you go to speak to me if you have a problem or anything, like I think it's important to always put yourself in their position as well. Because you could become quite frustrated about a situation, I don't know, whether it's um, game minutes or your boy's not getting enough minutes or whatever it might be. You might be feeling quite annoyed about that. So I maybe think about there could be other reasons why. And then that sort of then might bring you down to a, to a point where you're not feeling quite irate about it. And then you go and, you go and talk to them in a reasonable manner. Because I think going through the foundation phase with Harrison, we found that sometimes the coaches could be quite, wanted to keep you a little bit at arm's length. And I understand that because they probably, they're bombarded with parents, you know, all the time. Mm -hmm. But then I think when the coach realizes that you're not gonna sort of like, you know, sort of, I don't know, come at them with all this aggression, then they are more open to talk to you. It's just about trying to, I don't know, always when in any situation, I always just try and think, well, how is that person feeling? Why has that happened? And and look at it in a again in a holistic way. It, not everything is from my point of view. Like okay, okay, I'm coming from my point of view, but not everything. I'm not right all the time. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Do, do you understand? Yeah. Do you get that? I think I think also as well we've learned even now with Ozzy being ten is trying to get the kids to go and ask the questions. Yeah, that's so dead. That's don't so don't true. don't the the last resorts the parent. Yeah. Try and get the kids to try and find out for themselves. If they can't then find the answers, then you might have to go and ask the question. And and that's one thing I think the academy is that specific academy is good at is is um, encouraging the, the the players to challenge, and are, always ask the questions. Even like don't be afraid to challenge, you know. And I that's one thing I really like about that particular academy is is that they do do that. Don't you think? You know, and but also making the boys understand you might not like the answer. <laughs> it might not be what you want to hear, 
But actually, that honesty, and if you get the honesty back from from the coaches or the academy, whoever it might be, that's going to give you that opportunity to grow. Mm. I I think you know you might not like it, but you might go, okay, well, how am I going to get to where I want to be? And and also challenging and questioning yourself, like as as a player. Feeling, I think the conversations always bring stuff out. If you don't mm. talk, then you yeah. don't find things out, and then you can't go away and work on them yeah. things. Yeah. I remember that. Remember when one of the coaches asked us what, what Harrison's plan B was? Oh, yeah, and Harrison said, I don't have one. He said, plan B, what's the plan B? And then we went away and we thought, well, he hasn't got plan B. No, he... not, a plan, not a plan A for football and then everything else. It's He's playing football and everything else runs alongside it as a parallel. Because if, if plan B doesn't work, where do you go? Plan C, D, E, F, G... I think, I think they just, they just I hate this plan B business, but I think plan B, what, they try, what they're trying to say is, you know, that it might, if it doesn't work out here, what's going to happen? But for Harrison, it was like, well, there isn't a plan B. I just want to, I just want to play to the best level I can. I just want to be the best player that I possibly can be. And they find his level. And he'll find his level regardless. And then, and, then, and then school, and then schoolwork, and friends, and everything else runs in parallel with your football. And and why, why should you have to have like something if you don't like anything else, and you just love football, and you live it, breathe it, eat it, whatever? Like, what? Why do you have to find something else? Why do you? You know, I, I don't know. It's a question, isn't it? If that's another conversation. Oh, we are so with you. We love what you're saying. We have to clip that. That is gold you, for us. You said it about um, Casper's birthday. So, I mean, it was a terrible cake. I didn't even make it. I literally <laughs> bought two cakes for the Vanessa and put this football one on top of this chocolate one and hoped for the best. I was like, <laughs> but it was a football cake. He had like, he wanted the new Juventus kit. He wanted the new Preds that were there. He wanted... You know, football gloves. The football gloves. He ever everything. He wanted to go and watch Tottenham. He was he wanted to go and watch Tottenham. That was one of the things he wanted to do. He wanted to do a tour. But you know, all these things on his list all revolve around football. Now, okay, yeah, that's his environment. That's what he's been brought into this world, like in a family that really love football. I mean, I didn't always love football, but I love it now because I really love what it creates. It creates a togetherness. Like even at grassroots, like we're such great friends with, like even Harrison's grassroots parents. Like now we're friends with them. We're fr like really good friends with Casper. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know Zach's that well yet because he's only just been playing for a couple of weeks. But I'm sure that will sort of evolve and grow. Mm -hmm. It just you know Aussies, we're really fortunate that Aussies in a in a team at the academy where there's a few players that are from the local area and we knew them before, but we've become fantastic friends and and actually they're a great support to us, huge support. But I just love I love you've got to support each other. Yeah, but you have to people. support you. if you live near people, you got to support each other because it's hard. Yeah, it? it's hard. But I just yeah, I mean, I I dance still my life and that you know I was not football at all, but now I just I just love what it, I love what it gives people communities all of that. Oh, I love that. And guys, do you, because I mean, I just can't tell you how much wisdom I'm hearing in this and how many helpful bit tips and, you know, things for other parents. But do you guys, it sounds like you're quite conscious. Do you guys discuss how, you know, this sort of parenting journey you're on together? Because it sounds, you're so on board together with it. I just love it. It's so inspiring. And so do you guys discuss it or? I don't know. I don't think we check in with it's funny because you always, I always check in with the boys all the time. Are you, are you still enjoying it? Are you happy? All these things. But I don't know if we I do. Th we think... don't actually say to each other, oh, do we? Well, I don't really think that you listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but all I would say. You definitely don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say um, we're really fortunate with Brad's job where he works here. So we're, again, this is why at lunchtime we're able to sit sure. with you. Um, I love it. And we, because he works shifts, we do have, sometimes he might be on nights, he's on he's on a set of nights at the moment. So we are around together during the day and we do, we've got a little dog and we love, like literally, I mean, we should have just had four dogs because it would have been easier, wouldn't it? But um, Here we go on dog walks. Dog walks. That's our uh, and, But I think we do, I think we do check in and we do, if there's something that, needs addressing like we talk about it oh what's the best way to you know again it all comes down to communication mm. and talking and it's so simple it's not rocket science yeah and there's yeah. the other like oh, you sorry you seem very 
to secure. We talked about, you know, being open with a club and you know, not feeling that fair again, maybe initially when you first sort of get in. Yeah, where it. does that security come from? So put football aside, mm-hmm. is that just you guys, you know, irrespective of what's going on in your life, you're, you're quite sort of confident in ourselves. And... Oh, I was just going to say. I think it's our relationship. Yeah, I think? think we're quite secure together. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I'd say in our early years of our relationship, we were quite... We're quite headstrong people. We're both quite... Um, we've. Um... I think we got all the rubbish out in the early years. <laughs> and I think... And I think what do you mean rubbish? Like, after I did, it's our giving me... No, I'm going to turn it into a counselling channel. <laughs> No, I don't know. No, no, but I think a lot of the falling out happened in the earlier yeah. years. And then I think because of that, because we're in such a secure relationship, I think then everything else follows. Yeah, but we are. Oh. We still don't, we? We I don't know whether you should. I don't know whether you should put that out there. <laughs> when, That's all right. We'll clip it out if you like. <laughs> um, like well, I would, one thing that's quite interesting Um is that this? I would like to, this. This journey is really. It's not for the faint hearted, and it's not easy, and it's not luck. And when people say, "Oh, your boys are so lucky," it's, it okay? They're fortunate. Yeah, it's really fortunate position. But that's come that that's come from hard work and sacrifice. There's a lot of sacrifice. And you know, yeah. it's really interesting. The other day we were talking about from when the boys, or oh, from Harrison when he signed at under nines, and that there were. 14 boys that signed and there's only four still there in the academy that are, that signs at under nines in the under 15s yeah mm. um so i mean that's that's a topic on in itself mm. but we were talking about the parents and ones we were still in contact with um but there were parents i think there were about four or five couples that actually split now whether that was due to academy pressures mm-hmm. i don't know but it is yeah. Definitely, it can be a quite a stressful journey yeah, in the early years. Yeah, but that's why I go back to how you need to, because well, mm-hmm. of the way we, because we've got a secure relationship, mm-hmm. I think everything else falls into place from that. It's like the starting point. Mm-hmm. I think if you don't have a secure relationship, that's when people break up. That's when you lose. Because it is pressured. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So like the, you know, there might, it, but again, it's just, I don't know, I really do think talking is I so think- well, there was something as well you said, Brad, that I felt like I was really interested in this because there's something that you said that was like, we are secure if they get released. Like, it's okay. It'd be fine. And often that's not necessarily the point of view of a lot of parents. So I think Martin and I have probably both sort of heard that, you know, this kind of okayness despite anything that happens in the club. It's what it's, yeah. You know what it is? It's because mm-hmm. I've played football since I was eight years old and I've literally given up this year and I'm 40. So I've played football my whole life. The football is a sport. Football's a sport to me and it's something I love doing. So why? That's what I should imagine. That that's what kids... you want for the kids. You just want them to love what they're doing. And like at the end of the day, if it doesn't, if the level is, if the, if, if it, you know, comes to a point where we're not within any academy system any, anymore and they're still loving and enjoying football, like, then we feel like we've really done our job. That is, that's the ultimate like, for us, mm. for them to love well, it. It's not just yeah. football, is it? It's whatever they want to do. You know, if you, cre- if you can help them create an environment where they can grow and love it, that's surely, that's a parent's job mm. done, isn't it? Whatever that is. Yeah. But, that's a mic drop moment right there. I, like. I, I think we've got Put that on a social media post. It's like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's true. As I yeah. say, I've literally just given up probably this season because I started missing some of some of um, characters' gangs last year. Because mm. you couldn't possibly fit it all in with all everything else. Is- <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I couldn't fit another game. But no, it's just, I don't know. It's even like my dad would still come and watch my games. I'm like 14 years old. My dad would still come, would still come and watch my games. And I hope I'm the same. When mm. I'm when I'm sixty, sixty five, I'm going to watch my kids still playing football. You know, number one fan. I love it. Your dad, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be me. There's, there's, you know, within our sort of our, our locality, there's a few families that we're re- we are close to. We all go and watch like their kids, and they've got boys that play sort of under 18s football now, um, and we'll go and watch them, don't we, on like a Sunday evening, and and Harrison's good friends with them, and. 
it, it's just again it's that community it's that togetherness i just think there isn't enough of that in the world it really does make it a nicer place to live for sure but yeah again going back to being okay about them not being at the academy you know i think yeah the dream is obviously yeah. they go through the whole pathway and but that's probably not going to happen Let's get in the real world. Let's be realistic. Yeah. It's probably not going to happen. And that's quite. And that's quite a good. That's also a good piece of advice. Talking to um, an under nines parent actually just at the academy of, of, a few weeks ago, and I said to them, you know, what a fantastic opportunity is amazing. Literally, nothing is a given. Like, just put all the work in. Like, you don't want to. You don't want to um, come away from this journey thinking, oh, I wish I'd done this. I wish I'd done that. You want to just just do it all, you know, do it all and enjoy it. But also just be aware that, you know, the chances of being going through to scholarship, it's, it's a really small number. So it's also like that realisation to uh, like that, that reality for us was it, that was important to accept that right from day one. And, and I think that that has helped us, number one, stay grounded on the path, like through this pathway. And also, again, like you say, just be, it's okay. Like it's absolutely okay if you don't. And communicate that with the boys, yeah. you know, because it's it's one thing. Like we always try to keep the football as pure as possible, mm. because like as you'll know, like Harrison's getting to that age now where agents start to contact. That you know, you're you're getting to the business end of, of where you want to where you want to go. Yeah. Um, and so that that brings a whole. I mean, we probably haven't got enough time on this mm. podcast to even talk about it, <laughs> but. Um, you know that is it's okay. part of football it's yeah. part it's part it, of the journey yeah it is, it is part of it. how how without, without going into too much detail how are you beginning to navigate that like what's your plan to navigate the business of football do you talk talk to people mm-hmm. so i've got some really really good people that i can speak to okay. and not everyone has that mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. It's just yeah, advice. Like hearing other people's experiences. I think like I'm preparing as well. Like again, like you're gonna, you're always. It's like when you're choosing a school, a secondary school for your kids. Like you're gonna hear horror stories. You're going <laughs> to. It's that not all. I mean, not all agents are going to be bad. I think you hear the. I was I was talking to another uh, parent recently who is actually uh, pro, and like one thing they said to me is like. When you hear the word agent, you think bad, but not all of them are bad. But it's really, it can be tough. It's hard to navigate and find the right person for you. And what might be right for one, like like with schools, might not be right for another. It depends what you want. I think you, I think you need to establish what it is you want from an agent in terms of business. You need to establish what you want as a as a family. Because ultimately you are a family, you're the one supporting, you've got them that far and, and also what the player wants. And then, then you've got to go out and find someone that's going to deliver that. That's tough. Yeah. yeah. But I like what you said around, again, I think you said it earlier around that community, knowing people, you know, gaining from others' experience and wisdom. So yeah. You don't know what you don't know in this business, right? So that can be very helpful. You know, you know it's like speaking to pros, parents, you know, that what what they've been through and how they navigate it, things to look for. And yeah, yeah I think education, could we keep going back to communication, but communication and education is everything. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. That's it. Now, I mean, seriously, no, there was, there was something that you said again, it comes down to um, you kind of being quite conscious about what do you want and, and, and your family and what's right for your kids. And but I think what, you know, sometimes in football, it can be quite an insecure world. You know, there is a lot of, in, there is a lot of, it's quite intimidating. You feel like you have at to, levels, I think at, at, at all levels, yeah, it, it can feel quite, you know, so for you to just say as well, what do you want from an, you know, like just, you know, rather than so what they can do, or what they will give you, it's like, well, what do we need? What do we want? You know, like what would be helpful to us? I love that. Yeah, and I, and I think there's quite a lot of, in this industry, again, at any level, is always uh, a concern with what others are doing. But what's he doing? Oh, why is he getting that opportunity? You know, and that, again, is something that we always said to the boys. Worry about what you're doing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what he's doing. 
But who cares if you're playing up? Doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Your journey is completely different. Hundred yeah. percent accountability. Hun- yeah, that's another. That's another. That's key. Always. What can you do? What can you be doing? You know, uh, it's again going back to the analysis. Like you've always clipped up. All of, I mean, even at even at the, the grassroots team, you have a VO camera. They're amazing, and you 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 go back through the games with Casper, don't you? And you'll say Casper will say, "Well, that that goal wasn't that wasn't my fault because he plays in defence. He's, he's that I I could. They said, "Well, no, but what could you have done? You know, what could you? That's the role. Mm-hmm. It's always what can you do to be better to have affected that situation." always and in line from the hope they take that through in line yeah no every thing is a lot of these things are so transferable and yeah, well so true you know, in life whether you're a business whatever that is it's all transferable skills yeah absolutely so on that principle of skills um you mentioned about your elders who you know have some days away from school and is at the academy how um tell me about that relationship with school how does that work because i know parents will be that'll be on their mind you know around the age group around as well of how that works obviously our schools are amazing yeah really fortunate so we are so lucky i think we're lucky because the secondary school head he's been in a situation where he's had a boy at a different academy go through the school so, or a not that specific school, but a school that he was ahead at. So he he has got some experience in that, so that helps. Um, he also is a fan of the so that also helps. <laughs> that also helps. Um, but I think again, it can't like the relationship is going to be as good as you make it because again, it comes down to talking to the school, making sure that they're aware of what they're doing. But also, so and like it's also really important that Harrison takes accountability of that. When he's away, he has to go and make sure he, he liaises with his teachers and gets his work that he has to take up to the academy and do away from school. He has to sort that out. But we always make sure that he's the one that's that we're, we're not doing that for you. Like you have to go and sort out your work. So, so again, that shows the teachers at his school that he cares about what he's doing because again, we always say to him, like, how do you think, like, your the way that you're behaving, how does that reflect on you? How what, how does that make other people feel about you as well? So, like, him going to the teachers, talking to them, it shows that he cares. And, again, in turn, if they think, okay, he's a good kid, he cares about what he's doing, we're going to let him out. He's, he's doing his schoolwork. Work. We're going to let him out, you know? Yeah. Behave, and yeah. all of that is so, is so important. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, we sometimes, are. sometimes it's easy to forget about what else makes, uh, you know, the characteristics of of a mm-hmm. of a young person, not just skill in the game, but those sort of, you know, less obvious mm-hmm. things sometimes that people forget about that, like you said, the how to behave, accountability, um, you know, all good characteristics. And it's so different, Mark. It's, it's so difficult, Marcy. Like, the kids growing up in the world now, it's, it's really hard. It's mm-hmm. so so many distractions you know like i think about when i was a kid and we didn't have social media and i mean you've only got a, a look at some of these kids like they've got like tens of thousands of followers and you know they're not being they, they created this you know profile on, on a social media platform and it's it's mad it's mad the world that they live in Get your head around that you know, and um, it's not easy. It's not easy for them, is it? No. I don't think it's easy. Um, and it's definitely a bit that. more complicated, isn't it? Definitely yeah. a bit more complicated. I, I, thinking, I was saying about not worrying about what other people are doing because mm-hmm. of the world they live in. That's really hard because mm-hmm. you'll see it. Oh, such and such played this game or, oh, look, he's got this deal. Or, you know, you're surrounded. You're immersed in it. You're in it. Mm-hmm. Um so with Ozzy, we we I mean he he's not on any social media. He's ten. He be he's not on Instagram or he, he, In fact, if you asked him now where his phone was, he probably wouldn't even be able to tell you. It's probably on a somewhere under his bed. No doubt, <laughs> love that. There was still short of the light though. Yay! Long may have laughed. <laughs> oh, I love that. We we he needs to have a phone. So when he's away, if he's on the coach or whatever, just to contact him when we're not with it. It's important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. 
So we could talk to you all day. Like literally, I still feel like Brad. Do you need to sleep or something? But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I know the way you rest. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I've just fallen a little bit in love with you. I want to come and live with you guys and just play <laughs> football the whole time. It just sounds so much, so much fun. Um, but can we just ask if you were to? You know how you were saying it's so important, parents supporting parents. And if you were talking to people who are just starting on that journey or, you know, maybe struggling with the journey in some ways, like what would be what would be some of the things that you would say to other parents? Oh, God. That's you know, a very good question. Three. You know, think of three. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> ownership. Yeah. Take ownership of what your young player is doing like help them to take ownership of that like so if there's a certain thing that has been identified that they need to be working on go away take ownership like practice that and then show evidence that you're doing that if you say say for example the club will come to you and say you need to work on your left foot it's almost like you've got to suppress every everything that they want you to be better at. So if they're saying you need to work on your left foot, show, well, like show them that you're doing, not suppress is probably not the right thing. Yeah, no, that's not. No. <laughs> you want to? It's not to give them an excuse. If they're, if they're giving you an, something to take away and work on, you don't want to give them an excuse that that might Say, be reason why. you're not good enough on your left foot. So if you go then away and you practice it and you evidence it, you can then say, look, you know, and, and WhatsApp it to your coach or put it on hide or whatever platform it is that your academy might be doing. Evidently, it say, look, left foot work, le left foot this, left foot that, and show that you're working on it because, you know, you can, you really can help your journey along by being that player that takes on board development pointers and, and goes with that and works on it. Yeah. You know, that is really, that's, that's viewed in a good way, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and then and then it'll be something else. Yeah. And then you have to start again and then it'll be the and the next thing and the next thing. And yeah. it's just a completely it's just a never ending it's a never ending no, cycle. No. But I, I would say that is one thing that I think that we have made sure that we've always done, haven't we? Yeah. It's if there's you know, it, it, it also shows that the academy, the coaches you're the, a learner. that you're a learner mm -hmm. and it shows that you're listening. Mm-hmm. So, because if you listen, but, and it's not just like going, oh, yeah, he says, you know, listening means maybe acting on what you've been asked to do. It's really listening. No, you can hear whatever, you can hear anything anyone says, but you actually listen. Um, so that, that's, that's definitely one thing that I would say. And that's, that's practical advice. That's not just like airy, okay. like, mm -hmm. you know, be strong. That, that, <laughs> that's something you actually can do. Yeah action and take away with you um, yeah, i agree the young, i think don't get too emotional that's so hard brad how can you say that it is emotional if you're safe if you're a parent on the cord and shouting come on yeah, okay all right okay that's okay. what i mean by getting too emotional i don't mean emotional at all because yeah. football is an emotional game you are going to get emotional but trying to stay in calm um, Oh, and don't get way too emotional when it's high or when it's low. Try and keep balance for the children. I think it's important. Yeah. Like, it, also, yeah. It, it also, it doesn't look great either for you. It's hard if you're like, you know, up on the sideline. I've been that person. Yeah, exactly. I've, been, been I've been that person. I've been that person. I've been the one on the sideline. Come on, Harrison, what are you doing? Like, all that. It doesn't help. No, no. So try, try not to get too emotional. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so important. Love that. So we're going to finish on a, we have this, Um, we always have this imaginary billboard. It, it may not be imaginary one day, but imagine there's a big billboard <laughs> of goals, power league and academy, and it could have a message, one single message to parents or players. What do you think that would say? It's only a game. <laughs> I love that. If we had a little tally for... Oh, uh, you know, I guess say uh, that would be probably number one. It's only a game. I love it. Yeah, it's a game. It. Enjoy it. You're playing, playing the game. Fantastic. Yeah. You guys have honestly been amazing. 
so much. We use this word a lot, wisdom, but just allowing other parents to hear these thoughts, these views, and take from it what they will. You know, I think is oh, oh, is oh. absolute. Yeah, yeah. It, oh, it's important. Not, it's not going to be the same as anyone else. Yeah, like we're coming from our own point of view, and, and you know, the way we think is 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 unique to us, and yeah. and the reasons we feel certain ways again is not going to be the same as other people, but. I just think the more you open yourself up to hearing other mm. people's experiences, mm. you know, it can only be a good thing, right? Even if you, even if you come away from it and go, God, oh, what an absolute load of rubbish they were talking about. That's fine. But I'm, again, I'm okay with that. And if you don't think I'm right. You're um, not. Most. <laughs> <laughs> on that note. I don't know about that. <laughs> but, <laughs> know that, yeah. <laughs> no dinner for you. <laughs> you guys. I, you know, I said it earlier, I just fall a little bit in love with you. I just, <laughs> I want to listen to that back. It was just so much good stuff in there, you know, so many helpful tips and, you know, ideas and just, you know, ways that you're being that are so inspiring. So I really think that's going to be so interesting. It's been an absolute pleasure, isn't it? Yeah, it's been like therapy a little bit. Yeah, I feel like uh, I was talking to you. I think that's what you want. <laughs> You've got a bit of marriage counselling in there as well, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need it. So much. <laughs> yeah, oh, we love them. Thank you. And all the best for family. Bye.